Hear me. Holy season. Mics are on. Mics are on. Are they on? Yeah, they don't amplify. You're them, absolutely so. right. Okay. <coughs> so, um, back to you, Derek. So the, the next the next item you have on is uh, reviewing for consistency with comprehensive plan. An ordinance of the city um, making several changes to land development code, including uh, Chapter Three development standards, creating a new section under Article Five, Division Two, the Benny Beach Road design standards, Chapter Four. Chapter, Article 5, Division 10, creating a new division of supplement, supplementary district regulations, establishing criteria for development and redevelopment along Bonita Beach Road corridor, amending Chapter 4, Article 5, Divisions 5, 6, 7, and 8, the use tables, and amending Chapter 4, Article 3, Division 1, plan development, providing for conflict of law, severability, codification, scrivener's errors, inclusion in the code, and an effective date. Okay, thank you. Good morning. Good morning, Jay. Good morning, Jay. So um, we've gone through this ordinance before, mm -hmm. and uh, we've made a few minor changes and, uh, and advertising requirements and so forth, and are ready to take this forward. So I'll go through it uh, sort of page by page, but we'll quick and if, if anybody has any, uh, any questions. Uh, <clears throat> The first thing we did in the ordinance is we defined the different zones of Bonita Beach Road, realizing that between the tool study and the DPZ co-design study, that there's different characters and so forth, and there should be a different cross-section ultimately for that. At the last time, we didn't have a beach zone cross-section, and that was a little different because in the beach zone, the city's jurisdiction stops at the center line of the road. And so even though we've, we're calling out what we'd like to see for a full section, you notice that the bike path and pedestrian sidewalk and everything is on the north side of the road where we have um, the 10 foot multimodal path, uh, a, a amenity zone where you see the little palm tree and then a pedestrian sidewalk and then we have our two drive lanes and then the median uh, that we'd like to see planted. Uh, and, and that is the beach zone and that's simply because we only have 50 feet to work with uh, in that zone. it wasn't here? Um, yes, and, and I thought you all had gotten the update, but, it, but evidently we didn't. We were, as you'll notice as we go through these, you'll see um, different entities at different sections, so they're all drawn a little bit different. But this was, um, uh, this is consistent with the verbiage that was provided. I know that was in that one. What's the, what's the width of the travel lanes? <coughs> 11 feet. All three? You have, you have two. You have, starting at the far left, you have a 10-foot um, bicycle, two-way bicycle path. You have a two-foot amenity zone, and then you have a six-foot sidewalk, and then you go into two 11-foot lanes, and then the median. Two 11-foot? Travel lanes. Travel lanes, okay. Thank you. I don't know if I can blow that. Give me a second. You got the little guy now. In here. Jay. Wow. Well, um, I was going to go to page width. Yeah. So everything's a little bit bigger. Also, while you're adjusting, there was a typo in here. Please. Um, number uh, in the middle of the page, number three, the for each of res was repeated twice, at least on my copy. Yeah. Mm -hmm. No, it's number paragraph three, three. Oh. page four. Oh no, it would I'm be sorry. page four, number three. Um, that middle line. Yeah, it was the page that he had on the screen previously. Was page four. I think. Mm -hmm. Is this mine? Yeah, right. so page four is the next. So okay. that's, uh, that's blown up a little bit bigger there, so. All right. All right. Okay. And there's also another typo there on under insert image. It says form. It should be from. Uh, With <clears throat> page four, too? Yeah. Second line. Separated. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Sep after separating. Um, um. Uh, okay. Gallagher, where was the first typo? I'm sorry. Um, it was on page four. It was 
paragraph <clears> three, <throat> and it was they used the words for, for each, each, for uh, each, two oh, times, thank you. D it doubled it. Okay. And then, of course, we have the sections for the um, historics in the commercial zone, the historic zone, and, and of course, this is one in the, where we have uh, 150 feet of right of way versus the the 50 foot, uh, and so we have pathways and sidewalks on both sides. Here. Okay. Uh, <coughs> and I complained about this before, but obviously it didn't do any good, so I'll complain <laughs> about it again. Um, there's another typo there on the, we've got form instead of from again. But these travel lanes, um, I was just making a comment to my, my neighbor here, that um, you've got some 10 foot travel lanes, mm -hmm. which um, I find ridiculous. Um, I don't know who set those up, but it's got to be somebody who drives a smart car or a mini. Mm -hmm. um, I have, unfortunately, own a motorhome. So when I read these for the third time, I went out to the coach with a tape measure, and I'm 10 feet from the edge of each, from the edge of my mirrors out, and I have mine tucked in. Okay. That road gets used by a lot of motorhomes and a lot of semis. And okay. The comment that was made to me when I complained about this the last time was that it's going to make it safer. I have, it, that's like driving where there's Jersey barricades. It doesn't make it any safer. It just makes it that you, if you're an inch off, you're in the other guy's lane. I, there's, they've, they've got 14 feet for trees, 17 feet on, on, uh, on the historic zone. It, it, I, don't, I don't understand that. I just... I can't, somebody can't explain to me how making a roadway narrower is going to make it safer. I just don't, yeah, I just I, don't get I have it. to agree with that. Okay. Um, you know, my other, my other question while we're in that same section is um, maintenance cost for all of that, for all of those plantings and the trees. Um, somebody's going to get paid to do that and it's going to be pricey. I just... That's just a personal opinion. Um, when I see a sidewalk with a tree at 20 feet wide and then two 10-foot travel lanes on the same drawing, I just don't get it. <coughs> sure there was a lot of work went into that, but they weren't taking into account current vehicles. And just for some background, um, I know uh, the clerk went ahead and inserted some links to studies that were essentially the basis for some of these items. So these were cross sections that actually came out of the tool design study. So we'd be happy to go back to um, tool design if, if there's still uh, funds available in that contract um, to see if we could get some more input. But this was based on the Vinnie Beach Road vision study that tool design group had completed for the city. And understanding that too with these cross sections, this is obviously Vinnie Beach Road. Um, the city does not own or maintain Benita Beach Road. That is a Lee County facility. And again, we're hopeful that in partnership with the county, should we ever get to the point where we are rebuilding um, the right of way with these travel lanes, that it definitely is going to be a coordination effort with, with Lee County as well. Okay. Okay. Uh, yes, go ahead and continue. So, and, and just to um, the argument that was made in Tool's report was. Narrower lanes, slower traffic, safer. What about I, the the they never mentioned or addressed the idea of motorhomes. So how about how about fire trucks, emergency vehicle? Yeah, no, and and I made a note. So um, let's continue on. We have the same we have the same thing, and you'll have the same comment I know on the interstate and gateway zone. Yes, <laughs> and the same the same typo is in all of those. Lines. So and there was one place where it's correct. I don't know why. <laughs> we cut and paste except for one. I never found it. It's, it's form. everywhere it says. Yeah, it says form instead of from. Everywhere it says separated from. It should. Under it says form. Beach zone is one under the. Uh, under the definition of beach zone. Yeah, where it says separated form a six foot pedestrian sidewalk. Yeah. The next page separated form a six foot. Oh. Uh, next page separated form. Separated four months. Ah, oh, gotcha. Okay. Mm. 
So I, I, the the big thing here, um, comments well taken, um, is was the idea that we should have different forms for each of the different sections. We shouldn't treat them the same. Uh, I mean, and uh, not to lessen your comment in general, but you know, <laughs> at the interstate gateway zone, probably even more, the width is even bigger of a problem than as you get closer to the beach. I, I have a. So. Question. Um, obviously, Bonita Beach Road is, is, is one continuous road. How are you going to go from wider to smaller? You have to affect s some kind of connection it, it, between. It does it now. One, it, it, it actually, one if, if you look at it, it, it does it now because what happens if you, if you get off the interstate, um, you can see, and if, if you're driving, there's a change as you get to Imperial. Between Imperial, as soon as you get to Old 41, it merges down. Mm -hmm. As soon as you get past, Publix um, off of 41, it merges down. It, it, it actually does this already. Okay, um, so there's no particular plan for how you're going to do that. Well, it, it, it happens by intersections. It, it, it's, that's <laughs> because when you look at an intersection, and a perfect example is this, this contemplates that the median is lost as you get to intersections where you need turn lanes. And if you look at turn lanes, and turn lanes vary, on uh, the turn lane here at uh, Benny Beach Road heading west to go south, if you look at that turn lane, that turn lane is very, very small and has a huge elevation change because of the conditions that existed at the time it was constructed. If you go back to um, Benny Beach Road and Old 41, and you're turning left, you'll notice that there's two lanes and there's actually a bike lane there. <coughs> and that's, that is in part because the radius needed to make that that turn is different because the roads aren't at 90 degree angles. So there's this, these things sort of naturally happen, and if you and as you drive, you'll start to know the sidewalk gets further back. <coughs> there is a it's a natural it, it happens. It's not an abrupt, um, but so you classify this, and then when you get down to the engineering design, you design it to be safe and to to merge it out. Um, but the comments about the lane widths that are. Jay, do you have a, a, a map that uh, shows the plan of where these transitions occur uh, yeah. between the beach zones and so forth? There is in, in, in the ordinance. We had that previously. Oh, yeah, previously, previously, I thought, but I didn't yeah. see it in this well, one. I, I didn't okay. see it either. And it shows the restrictions in the right of way and so forth. It's on page 10. And in black and white, it's hard. Uh, oh, I got you. Yeah, uh, I, I saw that. That wasn't what I was thinking about. I was thinking something right. a little closer in so you could see what was actually happening. Yeah, this is a tougher read, but it's okay. Yeah, the, I mean, the, the actual how it's going to happen is going to depend upon how they design it when they do the engineering plans. The plans that these cross-sections, the, the road is not built to that cross-section now. So, um, and if you, if you go out there, for instance, we have more lanes on some of these cross sections than exist now. And in some cases, you have more lanes than would exist ultimately. And, and the medians um, are, are, are larger in some cases. And one of the things that Tool in their plan that came up and said, you need to do it on a road diet, and if you really want to create space for a bicycle lane, you're probably going to have to take some space out of the median to, to because you've only got so much land to work with and you need to get everything in there. Um, and that road diet was where they, they took. That bicycle lane is 11 miles long uh, and uh, 10 or 11 feet wide. It, it's an expensive thing, uh, both in cost and in land, the use of the land of the dirt that it's sitting on. <clears throat> uh, I think it's a waste myself, but I would like to see uh, something like uh, the Key West um, um, little train that runs, because mm. I'm not gonna ride my bicycle to Publix, but I would take a shuttle of some kind. So I think that once the 11 foot was in there, <clears throat> it might be used more appropriately or put to better land use than uh, the bicycle route. But right now, bicycle routes are the hot thing, so that's really what's gonna happen. The second question I have for you, Jay, is, or, um, 
the, the dividing the beach road into uh, five or six different um, uh, designated areas. Uh, I have some concerns. Is would the plan in the future to be to design to to require new buildings built in that area to conform with some if it's in historic one be historic design is there, is there any uh, plan to implement that would make uh, the area the design of the buildings in the area comply with the design for that area not currently and and no one's talked about that the only conversation that's talked about that at all is the portion that's part of the old 41 overlay but no one's talked about doing that anywhere up and down uh, beach road i think the only uh thing you see is the council seems to favor those buildings that look uh old florida along the beaches or more beachy mm -hmm. they they uh, it's sort of uh, a tacit. Ramshackle. It's sort of a, a ta well. It's a tacit. It's a tacit agreement that they want to see old Florida in that area, you know, small scale, okay. that kind of thing. Well, <clears throat> I'm, I'm, my, I can see that this is kind of the wave of the future, but I think 11 foot wide strip, 11 <laughs> miles long, to be used for bicycles is kind of ridiculous, and I think. The, that designated area could be used for personal transportation a lot more effectively than bicycles. But I notice, uh, I will say that I notice a, a great deal more bicycles and pedestrians in my area on Old 41 right now than I did a uh, year or so ago when I sat here. So it, it is an effective way to get people yeah. afoot yeah. Uh, and, and get a movement. So maybe this is the answer, but I'm skeptical. And these bicycle paths are um, on one side of the road, They're not on both, right? It seems to me the pictures show them on one side. Yes and no. Yes and no. I mean, I mean if, if you get out to what I'm going to call um, east of 75, you know, they, we're talking about they're a traditional bicycle path on the edge of the road. But when in the downtown, when I went from downtown, being not, not our downtown, but our more congested areas, what you see is that um, they've picked one side or the other to put a two-way right. bicycle path rather than having to compete with traffic um, in, in the more congested areas. And they do that now anyway. Um, but one of the other things is, and if you notice, where they're placed, there's a little bit of a separation, because right now, I find it very dangerous. <coughs> People will be riding wrong direction on the sidewalk against traffic. I'm looking to see oncoming traffic, and I don't see this guy coming in right in front of me as I'm getting ready to pull out. And so if, it, if they have to go behind the car because of the way it's laid out, which is how this is, it's a, it's a much better situation. So there's been a lot of design thought into this. Um, but the reason they're 10 feet is because they have, they're putting two-way mm -hmm. on one side. But it switches from side to side, depending upon availability of right-of-way and so forth. Yeah, but the, not both sides, it's yeah. one or the other. So Jay, if you think about these widths, uh, mm -hmm. it'd probably be better for 11 feet for cars and nine feet for a bicycle than the opposite. I think that would address Don's concerns uh, that he has. 10 feet, 10 feet's pretty small. When you think about, it, it's like a parking space. The parking space nine, but it used to be ten, some somewhere. Uh, and 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 um, you have the median. There's other places, for lack of a better word, to steal the foot the footage from. Massage, yeah. But it's it's a matter of you know choices. Do you want more green? Do you want trees? Do you want grass? Well, I mean, I what, what choices do you want? The point of the street is transportation. I think the trees are lovely and wonderful. But transportation has to take preference. I would. <laughs> well, I think Naples has done a good job with what they did. And you see a lot of landscaping. Yeah, you do. I'm, I'm not I knocking landscaping. I'm just saying that the purpose of a street, whether it's a bike or a foot, somebody on foot or a car, you, that's the purpose is the transportation. So that needs to take, I think, a high priority. 
So, and if there are plenty of plenty. You, well, if I want to drink a glass of water, I could choose a, a champagne glass, or I could choose just a, a cup, right? Right. <laughs> um, I guess I don't get it's, that point. I, but. I, I, I think what he's trying to say is, <clears throat> and I'm not making any qualifications here. We had a charade a couple of years ago, and one of the questions was whether or not they should widen Benita Beach Road right in front of us. And the vast majority of people said, not if it means losing the trees in the middle. <coughs> okay? No, I hear you. So, so uh, that's the champagne cup versus just glass versus just a, a paper cup. So th it's, there's a quality, yeah. and, and that's for you all and council to decide to make those decisions. But I, there's I, can, where it's I coming understand from. that. I, I, my point is, though, <coughs> but if you couldn't get an emergency vehicle through, wouldn't it be better to have the road a little oh. wider than to have a tree? You're, you've made, and I've made a note of uh, the I comments, and we'll forward them back to the, the designers. That's all the point. If there's other places to take, uh, you know, a foot here or six inches or, you know, whatever, still have the trees and just yeah. make a few tweaks. <clears throat> yeah, I like the idea of slowing traffic down. Mm -hmm. And I, I can understand the rationale, but maybe there are other ways to slow traffic down besides narrowing the lanes. More police. <laughs> or speed speed, bumps. speed yeah. signs. Perfect. <laughs> so um, actually that puts us all the way up to we're at page 10. Um, and I think this is where I think if Jackie wants to take over, she wants me to do it. We get into the uses. We're on page 11. I, I, oh, go ahead. I, I'm sorry. Well, on page 11, I mean, I've a, I, I brought this up before, but evidently it didn't work. Um, at the, where the, the top of the, uh, the first chart, where it has over the, over the columns, it has the notes, special notes for regulations, interstate, that, that should be on the top of every page. Yes. That lineup, so you know what's there. There's only, it only takes, you know, you've got three quarters of an inch there. Right. It should be on the top. And my other question while we're there, I don't understand the markings. <coughs> it looks like a dash in a, in a short dash uh, at the end that we're on amusement park, and it's used quite a bit. What does that signify? It signifies prohibited. So, so because there's a dash, that means prohibited, and the underline is because it's new text. So we have to strike through an underline. It would be redlined if you could see it in color, but I think that's. Wait a minute. I have another dumb question. Um, why at the top did they always leave off community? Is it just because it's so far out they don't? If I can make just, uh, just to give you some background on why you see what you see in front of you is the consultants, especially um, in Toll Design's study, you will see that their recommendation was essentially to, to go ahead and create district regulations and not have property owners go through a rezoning to a plan development or a rezoning to a special exception to allow certain uses along this corridor. The idea is, is that if you obtain and you set forth the building development standards that you want, building orientation, um, we have architectural design standards, we have great design standards, we have landscaping standards, you know, at what point does it matter what's inside of your, your building box? Um, so that's why you'll see some strike, the strike through and underline it with the Benita Beach Road corridor where certain uses were allowed by plan development or special exception. Um, and then we had this table so we could make it more so that it's um, more efficient for a property owner to come in and redevelop or develop their property. Um, in the tool design study, um, there was acknowledgement that the community zone didn't need to adjust their changes because of the residential character of the community zone. So that is why you will not see a community zone section to implement land use regulations or zoning regulations for those because most of the properties out in the community zone are residential plan developments. So they're already zoned, they have their development standards, and it's going to remain a residential character. So you'll see that in the studies, and also we've implemented that here, that um, the uses won't apply to the community zone. Okay. Jackie, given that, the, mm -hmm. would you explain the impact uh, on the comprehensive plan as, re as regards to these charts with the zoning? 
So from the comprehensive plan, and again, so these amendments are to implement the Bonita Beach Road vision amendments that we did in 2017. And really, the future land use policy that exists um, for those studies was to go ahead and encourage a mixture of uses so we can alleviate um, high intensity uh, impacts on our materials and collectors. We're looking at interconnectivity. We're looking at um, capturing trips and, and really mixing our land uses. So, so from a comprehensive plan standpoint, um, it was just the encouragement of those. We did not change any density, intensity as part of those beach road visioning amendments. We really looked at encouraging um, mixture of uses. We looked at increasing interconnectivity, creating street network, grid network, um, things like that. Those those are the items that we really focused on in the comprehensive plan. So with these zoning changes, if someone comes in for um, a specific use on this chart, they still have to comply with the underlying comprehensive plan in terms of um, the overall general allowable use that's permissible and then the intensity and density of those uses. Thank you. I mean, that, that was my point, is that for us up here, these don't matter as much as if I was sitting on the zoning board. The comprehensive plan You're is... You're really only looking at it for the consistency with the comprehensive plan. Right. That's what we do here. Yes. So to get into the weeds here with all these uses is... They're just practicing on you. That's what they're doing. <laughs> so, so, I mean, you know, uh, we can read through this and talk about the different uses <coughs> and so forth, but this has more to do with <coughs> other things other than comprehensive plan. Comprehensive plan speaks towards, uh, you know, flowery statements about what we want to be and that sort of stuff. Broader based goals. <laughs> yes. Just make sure we're we're following those. And we've looked at these a lot of times. And Lots of times, that's yeah. right. Yeah. Yeah. So I have another stupid question, but um, where would you put mini golf? Would that be under like amusement park or? Mini golf is a recreational, uh, commercial recreational facility, and I forget which group it is off um, the top of my head. But those are where these. Have pages and pages of, uh, yeah. of required uses and permitted and special exceptions and so forth. Yet, really, the thing we should are overlooking is things like recharging stations. You know, that's going to come quicker than we really think. And uh, as far as I know, there, except under uh, accessory uses or something. That's the only place it's... Yeah, you brought that up before. Yeah, well, we mentioned before, yes, but I look at it and think we're, <coughs> we're, we're, we've done away with hitching racks, but we haven't yeah, taken the next step yet. Right. So, <laughs> uh, uh, really, I'm <coughs> serious. I think that this is something that uh, any uh, upgrade in the community needs to be addressing because it's mm -hmm. going to happen, and it's going to happen, I think, quicker than people realize. There, there are fueling stations now, gas stations, Wawa is one, in certain areas that they have electric charging stations. You put your card in and you sit there and you charge up. My son has an office down on, in Naples and, and they, they have a parking garage adjacent to their office. Mm -hmm. And in it, at the end of each um, wing, I guess you'd call it, there are one or two spaces on the two floors that for uh, electric cars with, with um, charging stations. And that's the kind of vision I think that we should be looking at also, that as new construction comes on, or, or major remodeling and so on, that there are provisions for uh, that sort of thing. Yeah. I looked at the the building the other day for the for the new uh, uh, building f for the uh, poker rooms and so forth. I looked at there's a very extensive parking lot area out there, and yet I thought there's an ideal situation to require one or two yeah, recharge stations, but it was not included uh, uh, because it really hasn't been an issue yet, but it will be. We actually, I think, I'm just pulling up our code. It looks like we did address that probably when um, Waldrop Engineering updated our use activity groups. 
Um, ch car charging stations are covered in our essential service facilities group one. Mm -hmm. So that is already included in our code. Like, like you said though, and, and that's an absolutely fantastic point because it's coming. I mean, it's yeah, here it's, already. It's coming quicker than But me. I think the free market's gonna sort that out. There's gonna be more integration with regular gas stations and you're gonna see new ones built that there's gonna be an, a charging station with that, just like I think, yeah, I mean, let, let's face it, if I'm selling gas and I'm not selling as much gas, I still want you to come to my convenience store I'm going to sell you some electricity. Well, I think the same is with Wi-Fi and everything. And yeah. I think they do have Wi-Fi in Riverside Park, don't they? Or do they? Did Are I hear that? Or was that? that? Or was that a thought? Are we ready for it? Mm -hmm. um, yeah. Yeah. Um, so you right. I, I had one other question on 13. Um, down here, cemetery, um, under the historic, why did they put permitted? Or am I reading that wrong? Why would it not be SE? What page are you on? 13, bottom. <coughs> it's under cemetery, by cemetery. In the beach zone? Huh? Cemetery. Your concern, or you, what's your question? Thir 13, yep. on the left side where it says cemetery, mm -hmm. under, I think it's the historic column, why, why is that permitted? Why not special exception or something? Do you find it to be an obtrusive use? Um, it can be. I, can I think it could one. be. I, I don't yeah. think the tombstones would, are, um, mm. might be. But if they, if they have anything further like a crematorium or anything like that, which I don't know would fall under cemetery or not, and that's part of my question, I think that might be. I don't know. <coughs> Just a thought. <coughs> Jay, have you made the total presentation? Hmm? You've made the total presentation. Up. I don't know what your I'm part here. Know. Yeah, we're we're, we're just, just going through the, the questions. uses now. The questions for uses. I have one on page nine. Okay. It says plan developments that are partially constructed, but then on the next line we talk about uh, building orientation. It, they will come into compliance with these standards for interconnectivity and building orientation. At the point that you're partially constructed, I wouldn't be talking about building orientation at that point. This, so. this is an area we've had a, a lot of conversation internally on. Um, along Benita Beach Road, there are a number of entitled plan developments that really haven't done anything. So they're just sort of sitting and we want to try to find, uh, we're looking, and we are looking for recommendations to find ways to not punish them, but we realize that once they start, probably the first thing they do is they're going to put in their landscaping. So we're really not expecting them to come to compliance, but we're trying to find those projects that are only partially built. What uh, hooks can we say that there is a reasonable opportunity for them to come into compliance as much as possible without taking away entitlements or making them jump through hoops? We're, we're sort of looking, and that was one that we were thinking that if they had built out a, par a portion of the site, maybe had one building, they had two, two additional phases, we would try to get those additional phases to build uh, in an orientation that uh, better suits the vision. So all of that entire section is, is very difficult, and we're going to have a hard time with that. Did that happen in, and I think we're trying to do this, uh, community development to get, get a site plan approval, because that's where you'd want to start because it's very expensive to change orientation and so forth when buildings are partially built. But most of the, and most of the ones we're looking at, you know, most of these plan developments, they're bubble plans. And, and the ones that come into the bubble plans, and even if they are, if they do have a, um, part, they're partially constructed, they're generally only submitting site development plans for that small right. portion that we're leaving. Yeah, them that's the time to, to really look at it. About a year ago, we had the issue with, uh, the development out of Publix. And I think at the time, if I remember, because it was more than 50% right. completed, we allowed them the exemption uh, on the thing. But it was, a, it was a percentage of completion that kind of waved the flag. And, and e even though it sort of solved itself now already, but the old Albertsons was an example. Albertsons went out, property set there with, you know, basically half empty for right. 10 years. Um, whatever, uh, there was out parcels that have now been acquired and are being built on because uh, the economy turned around. But, you know, do you want something that was literally that was improved in 1990 
to yeah. come forward in 2020 uh, when the standards and, and everything's changed so much and just say, you know, it's, it's okay, you can, you can do that. Or to the extent, Paul, now re recognizing that there's a percentage there that you just can't get past, but without parcels or things, there's opportunities. And that's what we were trying to come up with a way to quantify it um, from a practical standpoint. Well, I think, too, that this, what this is headed towards or looking towards is form-based architecture. When you talk about orientation, you're mm -hmm. talking about form-based architecture, which is the next thing the council is getting ready to approve, I think. And so this would really kind of speak to that, is that you're going to have it some kind of a stick in there that allows uh, to be uh, compliant that sort of requirement. So, you know, the, the caution, I think, would be that, you know, in the site development stage is the place you want to catch most of this kind of stuff. And I think once form-based code is approved, uh, it probably will be, that uh, that's, that's going to happen, that we're going to rely more on uh, site planning the orientations of buildings and that sort of thing. I think our expectation is that once site um, form-based codes are adopted for the downtown district, that it will slowly roll downtown. out. Yeah. There, you don't have a problem with orientation. <laughs> it's going to face the street, period. Okay. Um, well, yeah, the example that you gave <clears throat> there, um, I was thinking about it there. <clears throat> so, Basically, any renovation that goes into that area is a is a complete start over. They they would be better off if the building wasn't there. Not not necessarily, um, but you know you you have a lot of different plan developments where there's out parcels that haven't been built on, and you know if they're under a certain percentage. Now that's we come with percentage um, of what you're doing you need to bring it to the code. On the other hand, across the street from there is a PD that's pushing 20 years old now, and they've never done anything. Mm -hmm. And there's, there's reasons they've never done anything, and they can be the economy, they can be flooding, they can be the fact that things have changed so much that that plan probably doesn't really work now the way it would have you know, 20 odd years ago. And so what we're trying to do is make sure that the city is getting the best uh, that's available and sometimes that means going back and revisiting what's going on. But, but at the same point in time, we're coming with percentages because we're trying to be fair and realizing that, you know, if you've got a building that's got a 60 year life and it's only 20 years into it, you don't necessarily start tearing things down. Okay. The only other question I had in here was page 28. <clears throat> and I'm trying to find the connection with the use in the statement here that says that, uh, Site-specific regulations uh, under B, all development and redevelopment of these areas shall incorporate the following design standards. The only one I have a question about is number four. Buildings fronting Beach Road, Tamiami Trail, Old US 41, and Imperial Parkway shall have a minimum of 70% glazing. Now, what use would fit 70% glazing? There's only one I know of, and that's retail or mercantile. So what I'm saying is that this, we, right now we require 30%, which is a lot in many situations where I don't have retail, but I want to build a building. So when I start saying I have to have 70% uh, glazing, I've got a building that's mostly glass. I only got 30% of wall mass. That's retail. So and I've run across this quite a bit with people that can't reach the 30% on a regular building that's not retail. So I think that should be looked at a little bit harder and to see of what uses that would apply to. Because there can be uses for, say, retail, then you'd have to meet that, and I think that's okay. Sure. And that came out of the tool design study to increase the standard from 30% to 70. So again, if there's input um, based on our experience to modify that or to put in language that allows us to alter that based on use yeah I think that'd be a connection there and I think two oh two should have asked some architects about this they have a big air conditioning unit wouldn't they? <laughs> well let's take for example on Beach Road <coughs> if I locate a building on the north side I'm gonna pay more for that building than I am for the building on the south side that's because I get Sun coming from the 
the uh, south to my building on the north if I'm facing Beach Road. Now, if I have 70% glazing, wow, I've got a pretty good bill if I can't buy sun control devices or a lot of expensive glazing. You see where I'm going with this? You've got to sure. be careful with this kind of stuff with those kind of requirements. All the rest of this is fine. I mean, I, I think it's great. And based on your experience, too, if you think that additional standards should not be added and we should let the current LDC dictate, um, this can be removed based on... You know, I think you're right, though. You, you could tie this to, to certain uses, and I think that could, be, that could work really well. So, Tool came up and said, here's some standards we think you ought to look at. DPZ looked at it also, and DPZ's position has been great, and we're not worried about the use, because as long as the, the form of the building is there, exactly. the, use, the use is it it, matter. inconsequential in their opinion in a lot of ways. I mean, there's objectionable uses you don't want, but other than that, does it really matter whether it's an office or retail if, it, if the building has a look? Does it really matter whether it's a restaurant if the building has look? Uh, and that's more the, the position they have, and they're more of a form-based uh, ideal. So the real question is, if you go with a form-based ideal, 70% may be fine in some areas of the country, maybe it's the wrong percentage here, <coughs> but there's where your input, um, you know, the local input may, makes a difference, and you can, you know, you can do it uh, any way you want to, but uh, even DPZ talks about turning up a thermometer and uh, how they decide <coughs> certain forms. But you know, you can get the same concept of character, if you will, by requiring porches and less glazing or, or whatever. But that, that, that is their idea of some sort of yeah. um, what attracts you to the building. Well, you know, again, too, uh, in form based architecture, the concern is for the people that are viewing the building. Right. Not a concern for the people that are using the building. So you see, you have to bring, there's several driving forces you have to come together. And uh, if you get too restrictive, then your architecture is predetermined. And that's what we, I don't think what we want. In other words, preconceived notion, because I'm always one who looks at the owner and sees what his program is and what he want to do. Now, if, if he says, I got a bunch of off, I'm a dentist's office, and I got my, my uh, spaces, my uh, operable, operable spaces, the, the uh, procedure spaces facing uh, the road. But I don't want all that 70% glazing. <laughs> you know, I, I'm, I'm doing some procedures in this, in this building, this space. So you require me 70% glazing, I can't accomplish that. Or if I'm a bank, I got my vault on that side, well, I gotta have 70% glazing here. Uh, where it's a design problem because I can put the vault maybe on the other side. In some situations, programs don't allow you that kind of flexibility in, in you know, developing a floor plan. So I think 70% is quite restrictive, meaning it's too much glazing. Can we so, get you on what you think yeah. would be acceptable since you're probably going to implement the code? I can't think of any building on Beach Road that's 70% glass right now, as I well, really we're going mind. to have some. We, we have uh, we have a building that is uh, going to get, be uh, retail, and it's a, it's appropriate because that's what the program says. Cool. I want you to see what I have inside, and that's why you have that much glazing. But if I don't want you to see it, what's inside, I've got a problem. I now have to change my entire plan to throw everything on the back side or other side. You say, and then what do I do with all that glazing? I mean, you put sunscreen on it like I did over there. Right. So fries everything inside the building. Yeah. But, you know, that, that's fine, but then you have to t uh, take a look. The second part of, of that is, is glare. Yeah. Okay? I can block the sun out, but I can't block uh, reflections off automobiles and bumpers and things like that. So there's a lot that goes into this. But I can, I'd be yeah, glad to sit with you and talk about it and let's see what we can come up with. And that's the only comments that I have. I only have typos, I think. So. Well, Okay, so we're at page 28. What page was that on you were talking about with the glazing? Uh, tw uh, 28. 28. Yeah. Uh, yeah. <clears throat> B4. 
And you notice in the sketches that I guess these come from DPZ. Mm -hmm. uh, in these sketches, show me the buildings that have separate seventy percent glazing. <laughs> there are none. <laughs> <laughs> oh, this this is from Tool. This is from DP. Tool did the seventy percent. So what? T Tool did oh. the seventy. Oh, okay. We were taking the recommendations from both consultants and merging them yeah. into one document for implementation. Yeah. Okay. Um, does anybody uh, have any more substantive comments? I have several things that I think are typos that I can do after this meeting closes. Mm -hmm. So was that a yes? You do have something, or you? No, I don't. <clears throat> All right, and I guess I still have to call for public comments. Are there any public comments? Seeing none, <laughs> we will move on. Um, there is one uh, one additional thing that I need to do. Uh, don't scream, everybody. We need to select a vice. Chair. Well, we need to we do a recommendation. We need a vote on. I'm sorry, I'm moving on. To, too anxious to get out of here. All right, could we take a vote, Michelle? Uh, we need a motion. Do we need? We do. All right. Sorry. Um, all right. Nobody wants to make a motion. I'll make the motion, but I still have my concerns over those traffic lane widths. They've been. They've okay. been noted. And uh, for the motion, do do we need to say to include some typos that? Or anything like no. that? I don't think right. so. It's really on the yeah. amendment of the ordinance. You, oh, I thought well, you were going to make the motion. Yeah, sure. Oh, I, that's, that was my motion. That we approve, but with reservations on the traffic lanes. Okay. I'll second it. The, the width of the traffic lanes. Yeah. 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 Now we'll I'll call roll. Um, Committee member Vincent? Aye. Committee member Colapetro? Aye. Committee member Schwartz? Aye. Committee member Matero? Aye. Committee member Sims? Aye. Councilwoman Gallagher? Aye. Thank you. Thank you. Now, <laughs> um, I'm not quite sure how to go about this. Um, I, I could take some, some cards and just deal them out and say whoever gets the ace can be <laughs> vice chair. <laughs> <laughs> Do I have any volunteers? I, th I thought you volunteered last time. Well, I said I'm taking the end of the year. Oh, the end of the year. Oh, I. Well, this year. Yeah, to the end of this year. Oh, okay. So, does that suffice? If there's no objections, no objections. by unanimous acclaim, Mr. Yeah. Sims is now... We can do whatever we want, right? Yeah. Yeah. All right. Thank you, Rex. And I'm not, no, uh, not House of Cards. You're, 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 you're right. It's Let's see. The, uh, the, the next meeting will be when... She said she didn't have it. Uh, October 10th. October 10th. And I haven't... Yeah, called the minutes yet. and everything on there? Yeah. So, uh, the next meeting... I, I got an is another set. October 10th. Is more business. <clears throat> I move we approve the minutes. The oh, I'm forgetting... I'm forgetting... <clears throat> It's been so long, I'm just anxious to get out, I guess. <laughs> and I'll, right. suck, I'll second I that. A I won't be here for the 10th meeting. You, you will? I will not I will be. Not. Okay. Like excuse. Well, okay. I approve the second of the minutes. Mm -hmm. Okay. <laughs> Can we do this by voice vote? Yeah. Yeah, yeah that'd be all right. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Aye. Aye. Minutes have been approved. So. The meeting is adjourned at 11.05. Thank you all.